Greetings, physics enthusiasts. Welcome to AP Physics One, Unit Six, Lesson Six. And we are going to be talking today, continuing to talk about simple harmonic motion, and we're going to talk about waves. So I've drawn a little wave here, and I've indicated that the distance from one crest to the next crest is lambda. That's the Greek letter lambda, is lambda. That's the wavelength. It's a very important distance when we're talking about waves. Here's a wave with a really long wavelength. And here's a wave with a really short wavelength. That little distance is lambda. And then this is just you know, somewhere uh, in between those. So I'm going to talk about this little wave, and you see I've got it drawn on a separate sheet of paper so I can demonstrate the wave traveling along. The wave is propagating. That's the same word as traveling. So the wave moves or travels or propagates. And I'm interested right now, we're going to talk about the wave speed. We're going to call that V for velocity. Now, usually when we talk about speeds or velocities, we think about measuring distance traveled and dividing by time. Distance in meters, time in seconds. And that's what we're going to do here. But instead of uh, you know, getting out a meter stick and measuring distance and using a stopwatch for time, I'm going to show you a different way of calculating it. But that's what we're talking about. If I say go, stop. The crest started here, the crest ended here. So I'm going to measure this distance and divide by however much time went by on my watch. And that's going to be the velocity. But let's think about a specific example. Let's say the crest is going to start here and I want to wait until the crest gets over there. On your mark, get set, go. Stop. How far did that wave travel? Well, the distance the wave traveled was one wavelength. Now, I'm not saying a wave always travels a distance of one wavelength. Sometimes it travels only a fraction of a wavelength. Sometimes it travels hundreds of thousands of wavelengths. But we're looking at this one specific example. Go. Stop. When the wave travels one wavelength, the distance traveled is lambda, the wavelength. Um, how long does that take? On your mark, get set, go, stop. The time it takes for a wave to go one wavelength, you know that, right? The time it takes for the wave to travel one wavelength is called the period. So this is wavelength. And this is period. Wavelength measured in meters, period measured in seconds. So one way of calculating wave speed is if you know the wavelength and you know the period, divide, and that gives you the speed. It gives you the speed no, no matter how far you're going. If you went one wavelength, the time it would have taken was one period. Now, there's also some other equations we can use. Do you remember that period and frequency are reciprocals? Period, the time for one wave or for one cycle. Frequency, the number of cycles per second. So I could also say then frequency equals one over period, or I could say frequency times period equals one. All of those are the same thing. But if instead of period, V equals wavelength over, instead of period, if I write one over frequency, then I get speed equals wavelength times frequency. And this is the equation I want you to become familiar with. Just turns out that we use this equation a lot. If we know the wavelength of a wave and we know the frequency of a wave, that product is equal to V the wave speed. So truly, if you know any two of these numbers, it's easy to find the third one. And frequently, haha, ha, often on physics tests, 
two of these three numbers are given and they ask you to find the third. What's the unit for velocity? Meters per second. What's the unit for wavelength? Meters. What's the unit for frequency? S to the minus one. Meters times S to the minus one is meters per second. So this is a super, super, super important equation. It's worth writing down in your notes. It's worth highlighting. It's worth putting a little asterisk next to it. Very important. Now, one little tidbit. Sometimes we use the letter F for frequency. And sometimes we use a Greek letter. This is a Greek letter, lambda. So sometimes we use the Greek letter nu. I know it kind of looks like a V that got poked on that side, but it's the Greek letter nu. Kind of sounds like, you know, old and new, or it kind of sounds like that, that animal, the G-N-U, the new, but the same thing. So often, especially in more sophisticated books, you'll see V equals lambda nu. Same thing. Uh, so there is a lovely equation that we developed using our fun little movable wave here. Let me write it again. Speed equals wavelength times frequency. Now I want to talk about a misconception. Uh, that's something that people think they were told. And so they think it's true, but it's not. So I'm going to say something that's not right. Do waves with a bigger wavelength tend to travel faster. Do waves with a bigger frequency tend to travel faster? It looks like that, not true. If you change the frequency of a wave, if you increase the frequency, that does not increase the velocity. If you decrease the frequency, it does not change the velocity. The velocity is determined not by the wavelength, not by the frequency. It's determined by the medium. So a wave propagates or travels and it travels through something. And that thing that the wave travels through sets the speed. Mm. So we might say the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second which is about what it is. Uh, that's because we're going through air. So if we're talking about sound in air, I would say 340 is the speed. If I increase the frequency, that does not increase the speed. If I decrease the frequency, that does not decrease the speed. It does changing the frequency doesn't change the fact that the sound is traveling through air. So we're gonna study uh, sound a lot in the next chapter. But for right now, just you know, know that that's a low note. That's a higher note. And those different notes have different frequencies, but they all travel at the same speed because they're all traveling through air and the medium determines the, determines the speed. So in other words, if frequency increases, that makes the wavelength get shorter. And if the frequency decreases, that makes the wavelength get longer. So frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. So it might make more sense to write this equation to say, hey, the wavelength changes. The wavelength is equal to the velocity times one over the frequency. This is truly more, it's a better way to think about it. This is my constant, because all the ways that travel through air go at the same speed. And as I increase the frequency, that decreases the wavelength. This is just a prettier way to write it, and it's written that way more often because there's no fractions. But this makes more sense because this is my dependent variable. The wavelength changes as the frequency changes. And this is my proportionality constant. So anyway, you'll get the right answer if you plug in here. I just don't want anyone to think that changing frequency changes speed. It does not. 
or that changing wavelength changes speed. It does not. Changing frequency changes wavelength, or changing wavelength changes frequency. All right, I've said that over and over again. I hope it made sense. And there we are. I'm going to peek at how we're doing on time. We are doing just great. So um, sometimes we send a wave along a string. I showed you at the beginning of this chapter a video of me uh, sending a wave along a slinky. That would work fine. Or maybe uh, you don't have a slinky. So you're just going to you know, go out into the backyard and find yourself a tree. And you're going to tie a rope around the tree. And then here you are. What a fun Saturday afternoon this is. You are going to hold onto your rope while it's attached to a tree. And you can send a little wave along there. Oh, my goodness gracious. Wouldn't that be fun? And so um, you can send a little a little bump along there. And it's going to travel along. Who determines the wave speed? Does how fast you move up and down determine the wave speed? No, that determines the frequency. The rope is the medium now, so the rope determines the wave speed. Um, and so, you know, if we're standing here alone and we have our tree, the wave gets to the tree, and sometimes the wave will reflect off the tree and we'll get a wave coming back. So maybe I'll have a wave here. So my wave went in, it hit the tree, and now it's coming back, and I can send another pulse. Each little bump is called a pulse. And what do you think happens when these two pulses get to the same place? Ooh, that is exciting when two pulses get uh, to the same place. And the answer is when two pulses get to the same place at the same time, we call that superposition. Superposition, there's two in the same place. Now, if this pulse is what I'm gonna call an up bump, and this pulse is also an up bump, I get two up bumps in the same place, and I might get a really tall up bump. And that would be called constructive interference. But I'm going to draw the same picture again, but have something different happen. So here's my tree, and here's the string, and here's the person holding the string. Sometimes if a person sends in a pulse on the top end. Sometimes when the wave reflects, the wave gets flipped over. Oh my goodness gracious. So a bump on top, when it reflects, would turn into a bump underneath. It happens sometimes. And so if that were to happen, when these two waves get together, they could actually cancel each other out and we could just get flatness there. If two waves coming together and giving me a big bump is called constructive interference, two waves canceling each other out is called destructive interference. So in general, when two things are at the same place at the same time, they interfere. So. Both of these are examples of interference. Two up bumps or two down bumps would be constructive interference. But one of each is called destructive interference. Interesting. And um, you know, I could make, make that happen by sending a wave along, having it reflect, and then sending another wave along. When we have reflection, sometimes things get flipped over, sometimes they do not. This flipping over is called a phase change. Lots of vocabulary here that wasn't written very clearly. Phase change. Here we had no phase change. Sometimes we get very clear. We say there is no phase change upon reflection. 
Here, there is a phase change upon reflection, when reflection happens. That's just a kind of a fancy set of vocabulary. Phase change upon reflection. Wonder, I wonder what would cause a phase change upon reflection. Let's think about that phase change upon reflection. Let's, instead of tying our rope to a tree, let's go to uh, an elementary school where there's a tetherball court. So there's just this pole here uh, for the playing of tetherball. But we're there on the weekend and uh, tetherballs are not hooked up. So what we did is we brought a little, uh, little metal ring and we threw it over and so there's this metal ring that can slide up and down really nicely. And we tied our rope on there. And so, so now we're going to send our pulse in. Now, because the rope can move up and down, it turns out that this up bump, as I'll call it, will cause uh, the ring to rise and then to fall. Well, if the ring rises and falls, that will probably cause an up bump to come back. However, there's another color. However, if I still had the tetherball pole, but I just, uh, I didn't have a ring like that. So I just tied a rope on there and I have to tie the rope pretty tight so it doesn't slip down. So now I have almost exactly this situation, except now the rope is tied there. So, when we get here, the rope is gonna pull up on the knot. And if rope pulls knot up, knot pushes rope down, Newton's third law. And that's gonna cause this downward wave. So I see why I might have no phase change upon reflection and why I might have a phase change upon reflection. So this is called no phase change upon reflection. And here we have, yes, we do have a phase change upon reflection. This is called a free boundary. This is called a fixed boundary. Lots of vocabulary today. So free doesn't mean at no cost. It doesn't refer to money. And fixed does not mean not broken. Free means free to move, able to move. Fixed means fixed in place or, or firmly in place, not going to move. So fixed means not going to move. Free means it can move. Um, and so that is what will lead to those situations where we have no phase change upon reflection or where we have a phase change upon reflection. And a lot of that comes up in uh, the problems that we're going to work on this week. That's why it's good that we talk about them. Okay, one tiny final thing, and then I will sign off. When waves travel in a medium, in, or you could say through, when waves travel through a medium, sometimes the medium ends. So maybe I have a string and then all of a sudden I've tied it to a spring. So a wave traveling through the string could continue to travel through the spring. If I'm talking about sound traveling as a wave, maybe it's traveling through air and then it's going to get to a door and maybe it's going to continue to travel through the door and then go into another room. If I'm talking about a light wave, maybe it's traveling through the air and then it gets to a piece of glass and some of it travels through the glass and then into the next room. So to continue from medium one to medium two, to continue to travel is called transmission. But sometimes the wave does not continue to travel. Here and here, we had a wave that reached the end of the rope and it got to the tree. 
Well, we didn't have the tree start to transmit that wave. We just had the wave get reflected back. It didn't, the wave didn't go into the tree. It just bounced off the tree and came back. So one thing that could happen is transmission. We'll call that option A. Another thing that could happen is reflection. So maybe my bump does not continue into the spring. Maybe it just bounces back. And in fact, sometimes both of these happen. Some of the energy continues to travel and some of the energy bounces off. A great example of that is um, if somebody is in another room, there's two people in the room next door and they're talking to each other. Um, so some of that energy bounces off the wall and goes back to them, but some of that energy goes through the wall and gets transmitted and you can hear on the other side of the wall. So sometimes both happen. And there is a third option. There are only three options. I'll tell you the name first. It's called absorption. Sometimes the energy that's traveling stops traveling. If it stops traveling, if it continues traveling in the second medium, that's transmission. If it goes back into the first medium, that's called reflection. If the wave energy is turned into another kind of energy and stops traveling, then that's called absorption. So um, sometimes light energy is traveling along and it hits something. Um, like if I were wearing a, a really dark colored shirt, the light energy would get absorbed by that and it would get warm. Mm. Uh, have you ever been to, um, mm, what's another example of absorption of energy? Uh, I think, you know, when we charge our phones, the energy is traveling through those little wires and then it gets absorbed by the battery in your phone. The light being absorbed is a great example though. Some of the light reflects off of me. Some of the light gets transmitted through my glasses, although some is probably being reflected and a tiny little bit gets absorbed as well. If I set them in the sun, they would get hot. So this is a, a fun thing that we talk about in physics. We talk about the three things, one, two, three, that happen when we reach a boundary between medium one and medium two. We can have transmission, we can have reflection, and we can have absorption. Those are the only three things, regardless of what kind of wave we're talking about. All right, well, that's all I have today for uh, AP Physics One, Unit Six, Lesson Six. I hope it made sense. Have a wonderful day. And remember, don't break the laws of physics.